Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar entitled Process-Led Transformation, Rapid and Reliable. I'm Candace Collins with Signavio, and I'll be your moderator today. Dr. Matthias Kirchmer is the Managing Director and Co-CEO of BPMD. He's an Affiliated Faculty Program for Organizational Dynamics, University of Pennsylvania. Dr. Kirchmer is an experienced practitioner and thought leader in the field of digital transformation and business process management. He co-founded BPMD, a consulting company focused on digital process transformation, operational excellence, customer experience by leveraging the discipline of BPM. Previously, he was managing director and global lead of BPM at Accenture and CEO of the Americans and Japan of IDS Shear, known for its Aris process software. Dr. Kirschmer has led numerous transformation and process improvement initiatives and has worked with hundreds of clients in technology, financial, health, consumer goods, and manufacturing industries. He's published 11 books and over 150 articles. He's affiliated at faculty at the University of Pennsylvania and received a research and teaching fellowship from the Japan Society for the Promotion of Science. Nicole Jacobs is the partner manager for North America Consulting Alliances at Signavio. She's been in the software technology industry for over eight years. From relationship management, solutions consulting, business development for the channel and channel management, Nicole understands and loves the power, potential, and value of what partners can bring to a large scale audience. Nicole is process oriented and passionate about BPM and process mining and understands the excellence needed to achieve business transformation and operational excellence across the enterprise. I'd like to share a couple of logistics with you now. You will see a question box on the, the yeah, right side of your screen. You can enter questions there as we go and we'll answer as many questions as time permits at the close of our formal session. We'll get back with you after the session should we run out of time to answer all your questions. You'll receive a recording of this webinar within a few days. And finally, once you end your session, you'll receive a short survey and we'd very much appreciate you taking a few minutes to complete that as your feedback helps us to continually improve our webcast for you. I'll now pass this over to our first speaker. Nicole, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Candice, and thank you all for attending and allowing me to speak with Dr. Mateus. I really appreciate your time. So I'll just speak for a few moments to introduce and talk about what Signavio brings to the table, but the majority of the presentation will be in the great hands of BPMD. Um, so from the Signavio part, of things, the focus of ours has always been customer experience or ex excellence that is always top of our mind. We have an end-to-end -end transformational capability that goes from process mining to BPM and back. It's an excellent uh, business transformation engine, if you will. We connect the why, how, and what of business process transformation and define the strategy and best productivity path forward, whatever the maturity level of the customer. Signavio acts as a central source of truth that allows our partners to produce the winning and best, best methodology forward for every single transformation point and transformation in the future. Um, if you will, we're an iterative process and a continuous journey. So we really drive from an inside out or an outside in approach. Uh, we provide the insights uh, from process mining regarding the customer experience to operational excellence, if you will. On the next slide, this integrated approach certainly helps to handle a seamless transformation like a first ERP uh, adoption or a migration. And with the concept of transformation as a journey, it meets this business process intelligence mindset or this transformation engine where it enables you to have an infinite game. In other terms, um, when the initial transformation is delivered, it doesn't stop there. Um, it enters into the right-hand side or a continuous loop where you can constantly augment and optimize your, your processes and transformations. On the next slide, some of our use cases, as well as some of our sales plays are identified here. We work in the area of any S4 HANA transformation journey, of course. Uh, procure to pay and order to cash are just some sales plays that we cover. There's many more, if you can imagine. We also allow um, transformations and insights into intelligent robotic process automation, governance, risk, and compliance, and then, of course, customer experience to operational excellence. So, 
any of these points within a customer um, within a customer's needs can be addressed. And I'll pass it off on to Mateus to discuss um, his agenda that's listed right here. Thanks so much, Mateus. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Nicole and uh, Candice. And uh, well, uh, nowadays, uh, basically every organization has planned or launched uh, some uh, digital transformation initiatives. However, there are also more and more organizations uh, that really struggle with those initiatives. And example here, big uh, financial organization, the CIO, very ambitious uh, with uh, his uh, digital agenda, uh, launched an, a huge uh, robotic process automation, RPA uh, initiative, and in less than a year, they had more than thousands of those uh, bots live, so a real degree of automation. Everybody was very proud. Another year later, they stopped all the bots. The whole digitalization had created such a chaos that it was not manageable anymore. They had underestimated that many of their processes changed much more often than uh, expected. And uh, then uh, uh, there were more and more exceptions to be handled that uh, the bots couldn't uh, deal with, uh, uh, which created a huge amount of work. They were able to uh, uh, eliminate a few bottlenecks, but they had not understood the downstream effects of that. And they had created other unexpected uh, bottlenecks that again created major issues. In order to overcome and avoid such uh, 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 challenges, a consistently and systematically process-led approach uh, to uh, such a digital transformation helps. It helps delivering rapid results, a short time to value, but it also uh, helps to deliver the expectations and to deliver the results we are looking for. And that's uh, the topic uh, we are going to discuss for the next uh, 25, uh, 30 minutes. I will briefly comment on this link between uh, business process management and digital transformation. Uh, talk then about how to target value to focus on what is really most important for the organization. We'll then discuss how to improve quickly, but also effectively in the context of end-to-end uh, -end, uh, processes. And uh, we'll uh, conclude uh, with uh, a few comments on how to sustain the achieved value and keep our processes on track. According to a study of one of the major uh, industry analysts, only 1%, 1% of organizations have their processes sufficiently under control that uh, they realize the full potential of digital technologies. And if you uh, take a step back and uh, uh, look how uh, uh, digitalization delivers value, it's not uh, by putting a, a piece of technology in your company, but it is uh, by creating new and enhanced uh, processes like uh, a manufacturer of uh, industry uh, compressors was all proud that they could connect to their uh, compressors at their clients through the internet and provide all kinds of uh, statistics about runtimes. But just that connection didn't add any value at all. Only when they use this information to come up with a new uh, preventive maintenance approach, then uh, suddenly a uh, value was created through that new and enhanced maintenance uh, process. And that is what uh, digital transformation is about. And that's why uh, more and more organizations see, oh, if we don't get our uh, processes uh, really mastered, uh, we will never get uh, the real value out of those uh, digital transformation initiatives. And uh, as a result, more and more companies start setting up what I refer to as a business process management discipline. And they do that by uh, putting in place a so-called process of process management. So they 
organize their uh, BPM as a business uh, process by itself. And uh, we have done uh, some research together with a couple of universities and identified about 25 to 30 key capabilities that uh, uh, BPM discipline consists of. Uh, but if you uh, cluster those a bit, uh, uh, you will see that uh, the process of process management is about three major topics, about focus, improve, and sustain. You focus on what is most important for your organization and there exists very solid research that uh, a company only competes through about 15 to 20% of their processes, 15 to 20%. That means the other 80 plus percent are commodity processes that need to work, need to perform in an industry average, but sophisticated innovation and digitalization initiatives normally don't pay off in uh, those areas. So to know those 10, 15% where to focus on very, very key. Most uh, uh, organizations have of course thought about uh, uh, improvement uh, uh, techniques, and there is a lot of technologies out there, automation uh, technologies, but also more traditional uh, around Lean, Six Sigma, all that. An uh, uh, issue that often occurs is, uh, uh, on one hand, <laughs> that uh, uh, companies uh, tend to lose that end-to-end -end, uh, process view, as we have seen in that initial uh, example. And uh, with that, they only fix uh, symptoms within the process without really moving the overall performance to the next level. And directly related to that, uh, another issue in those improvements is that uh, uh, organizations tend uh, to select uh, uh, one dominating approach, and then suddenly everything gets addressed with Lean Six Sigma or everything gets addressed uh, with uh, uh, RPA. But that's not what process management is about. Process management is about selecting the right improvement approach and combining different approaches to achieve impact in an end to end process. And uh, that's what uh, the improve part of uh, the process of process management is about. And last not least, once we have improved something, uh, at the end of the project, often we have not realized the full value. So we need to manage uh, that uh, towards uh, the value realization. And we need to make sure that we uh, keep that uh, uh, process on track and uh, launch uh, additional corrective actions when necessary, and also trigger the next uh, uh, larger improvement uh, when uh, required. And uh, uh, there, of course, the whole topic around uh, a process or process and data governance, very important to sustain those improvements. And to make a digital transformation successful and to use business process management as a kind of a value switch for that, these are the three areas uh, to address. Focus, improve, sustain. Let's have a look how that uh, works uh, in practice. And let's start uh, with the focus uh, uh, part. And uh, in order to define where to focus on, of course, uh, you need uh, to know your organization. You hopefully have defined uh, a business model. So I don't wanna comment on that uh, anymore, but uh, in order to execute that business model, you put in place an operating uh, model with all uh, uh, kinds of uh, uh, here larger end-to-end -end, uh, processes uh, that are then uh, uh, basically uh, decomposed into uh, uh, sub-processes. And uh, of course you can uh, go on and uh, decompose uh, even further, but already that's a, a picture and it's an example from a large technology company shows <laughs> that there is a, a, a lot to choose from uh, for such a digital transformation. And uh, I can only recommend it's worth to spend a bit of uh, time and effort to select where are the best uh, uh, targets uh, to get started uh, so that we get uh, best value out of the initiatives we launch. And uh, that is something uh, that can be addressed through 
a process impact assessment, a very simple technique where you identify on one hand your value drivers. So what is really important uh, for the execution of your strategy in your organization? What do you have to get right? Uh, so as Nicole explained, it's all about linking uh, strategy to execution. So we need to understand what it takes to make our strategy happen. And then we have our processes and that's uh, all the, the the things uh, we do in an organization and we need uh, to uh, figure out what is the impact of each process on each of those value drivers is it high like we see here is it medium is it low or is there no impact uh, uh, at all and once we have defined that we can in a very straightforward uh, way calculate uh, the weighted total and like that identify where are our high impact uh, processes in the context of a specific strategy and uh, through an, uh, a straightforward uh, maturity assessment we can then uh, see well uh, how well are we doing today this process and uh, how well should we uh, do based uh, on its importance and whenever you discover high impact low maturity processes these are the best uh, targets for improvements. These are the uh, areas to start uh, a, a digital transformation to really get uh, the best value out of that. And uh, of course, uh, uh, transformation, uh, ongoing uh, journey. So you would uh, normally uh, put in place, define a roadmap, uh, how to address uh, your different uh, processes and you prioritize based on this uh, uh, impact and the maturity of uh, those processes combined, of course, with uh, uh, budget uh, implications. And once you have identified in a process and you wanna start uh, the transformation journey, it's worth, as uh, uh, Nicole has also briefly mentioned, to have an outside uh, in look uh, at uh, those uh, processes and uh, a technique that has uh, become more and more uh, popular is uh, the so-called uh, customer uh, journey mapping or customer journey planning, where you identify the different uh, uh, touch point uh, that a client has with your organization, or we can even be uh, more general that a stakeholder has with your uh, organization, because you cannot just create customer journey maps, you can also play, uh, uh, define employee journey maps, you can define supplier journey maps, and the principle is always the same. You identify the touch points that an external stakeholder has with your organization. And then uh, you define what is the current uh, experience and what is the target experience that the stakeholder uh, should have. And if you then link your processes to those touch points, you get very good uh, uh, information, outside in information about how to uh, uh, improve and change those processes to meet uh, the, the customer requirements. And that means you add uh, to your value drivers uh, uh, additional uh, goals, additional aspects uh, that uh, reflect uh, here that, uh, that market view. So that you are now in a situation, we know what are the processes that we uh, need to address, that we need uh, to improve, and uh, we know what are the goals uh, that we have to achieve. And then we come, of course, to the situation where we have to go a, a bit more uh, in detail and really understand uh, the process and understand uh, where we can make uh, a difference. And we see here the example from an insurance uh, company, an uh, excerpt of an underwriter uh, processes, process where the goal was on one hand uh, to reduce costs dramatically, on the other hand to uh, increase scalability because the company uh, has been in a big growth mode. And while doing that, uh, improve uh, the broker experience uh, so that uh, that they really serve uh, their brokers uh, better. 
And uh, uh, in that uh, situation, they had uh, selected a uh, no-code uh, platform to, uh, to address that. And uh, there was quite a bit of struggle between the IT department that had created a very aggressive business case and uh, the operations uh, department who said, oh, that's a NASA uh, uh, here toy of those IT guys. And then we get stuck with that aggressive business case and cannot uh, deliver. We don't want that. So we used uh, that uh, notion of process and process management to bring clarity into that situation and to create the necessary transparency. So in the first step, uh, we created in uh, interviews here remote through Zoom and people talk. And while they talk, uh, we document uh, the different uh, working uh, steps uh, that uh, uh, different uh, roles uh, do. We uh, uh, identify what systems are used today, what decisions uh, are taken. So to get a real uh, idea how that underwriter process uh, works today. And then in the first uh, analysis, we say, okay, what impact does now this automation uh, initiative uh, using that uh, digital platform uh, have and uh, we could show here is a whole set of activities uh, marked with that uh, blue rectangle that can be fully automated. That means we don't need uh, uh, any uh, 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 people in the action there anymore. We save uh, effort. There are others uh, where you see those uh, little uh, triangles. Uh, these are activities that will not be necessary anymore because we don't need uh, to take uh, uh, notes in spreadsheets and uh, uh, send them around. And with that, uh, we can already get a very good idea how that uh, uh, process will change through that uh, uh, digitalization uh, initiatives. And uh, to get even more data around that uh, process, uh, we can uh, use that structure of uh, uh, the process and identify the happy path. So uh, uh, how about uh, 70, 80 percent uh, of uh, the transactions are handled and uh, uh, see then where exceptions uh, are. And uh, to, uh, to do that, we can uh, use uh, uh, relatively new but very hot uh, technology that's uh, process uh, mining where uh, the systems that currently support uh, a process uh, are used to extract uh, information about uh, the performance and conformance of that uh, business uh, process. So we get uh, information like uh, current cycle times, uh, like uh, how long does it uh, take uh, uh, from the point that purchase requisition was entered in the system till then the purchase order uh, was uh, uh, taken. So we get all kinds of uh, quantitative information that uh, helps uh, to really understand the process and create a, a solid business case. And that sounds, uh, I know, uh, very, very promising. I have to put uh, a caveat here in uh, the uh, uh, in the picture that uh, in many cases, the as is uh, processes are not automated enough so that uh, there's big gaps in this information uh, process mining uh, delivers. So uh, uh, a bit uh, uh, difficult to get all the information. That's why normally a combination between the more traditional uh, analysis and uh, that uh, process mining uh, is uh, the better way. And depending on what kind of uh, uh, improvement uh, opportunities you find, for example, if you find uh, uh, here opportunities for robotic process automation, then uh, it means you have some systems in place. And then such a mining exercise can uh, provide you very interesting uh, input uh, where your bottlenecks are and where you best uh, start your RPA initiative and how you uh, roll it out. But then we have quite a bit of information about our as is uh, process. Now we want to uh, uh, 
know how do we work in the future? How does our uh, to be uh, look like? Uh, and how do we leverage the impact of uh, the combination of digital technologies uh, that we are going to use? It could be a, a sub for HANA combined uh, with uh, some uh, uh, RPA uh, modules combined uh, with some uh, document uh, management uh, uh, the system, but we need to figure out what the impact of those uh, system is from a business point of view, and that is something that can be done through uh, so-called uh, process uh, reference models, and uh, such a reference model shows how a specific process like here, our underwriter process or an integrated supply chain planning process or a warehouse management process works if you leverage specific uh, technologies in an ideal situation. Now, independent from the specific business unit, the specific uh, products uh, uh, we are working uh, with, you get a, a, a picture about the the way, the vision, how an uh, underwriter process in our case here could work. And then you can use that reference model and apply it uh, to the specific uh, situation. So if you have then uh, a specific what uh, uh, home insurance uh, products, uh, that uh, a process may be uh, slightly different than uh, for life insurance, or if you have your integrated supply planning for your uh, uh, chemical uh, operations, it's uh, uh, slightly different than uh, here for your discrete uh, manufacturing. So you uh, uh, adjust it, but you always start with a business view on the, the impact uh, of uh, those uh, technologies. And in uh, several cases, we have created such uh, reference models in parallel to the as is uh, uh, analysis, since we uh, already uh, got uh, the guidance and knew there would be a, a certain set of new technologies used. So when we then uh, came uh, uh, out of the analysis, we could bring the analysis together with this reference model and create then the future situation, how do we work leveraging those new technologies? Uh, can really recommend uh, that approach. Uh, it saved tremendous time, the first uh, uh, application, but then when you roll out uh, such a solution across different countries, across different business uh, units, or even uh, uh, across uh, here, different product areas, uh, the, the you, you capture your learning uh, effects in your reference models and uh, reuse that knowledge systematically. So that you are now in a situation, you have an as is, you have uh, an uh, to be, and now you can compare both situations. And in that specific insurance case, we did then a, a very pragmatic uh, simulation uh, to show, well, how do things change when we move from our as is to our uh, to be? And uh, we could do that uh, by uh, just uh, uh, adding some uh, probabilities at the decision points, uh, uh, putting behind uh, the functions, cost time uh, uh, information. And in, in that specific uh, situation, we could show for one small profit center, if we move towards the to be process, we expect uh, one and a half a million of savings just in this uh, one area. And we achieve that by basically uh, uh, cutting the, the number of uh, uh, tasks that we have uh, to, to work on by half. And uh, uh, we achieve a scalability of uh, a factor nine. And we could uh, then also show that we can eliminate about 80% of the administrative effort, that we uh, can uh, reduce uh, the, the process cost by about 49%. Uh, percent. So we get a very, very clear idea how our uh, business case uh, will shape uh, and uh, set the appropriate uh, expectations based uh, on uh, uh, data that uh, we, uh, we use to evaluate uh, the, the different scenarios. And the good thing is this information 
is then not just used for the business case, but it's used as a basis uh, for the change management. And uh, it is used as a basis to configure and uh, develop uh, the digital technologies so uh, that everything uh, fits together and everything works towards uh, the uh, business case, which again uh, reflects uh, the, the, the value and uh, the value drivers uh, we had uh, identified uh, uh, using our strategy. What is in uh, larger digital transformations an uh, important uh, topic uh, that you often cannot move uh, from, uh, well, our current very manual way of doing things to the top notch uh, 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 digital uh, process with all the bells and whistles. But uh, you need intermediate uh, situations, for example, starts uh, uh, improving and automating the happy path and handling uh, most of the exceptions still uh, the old uh, way that can uh, already create uh, big advantages and uh, you get uh, a value fast uh, uh, out of that. So you basically transfer that uh, agile approach that is often uh, used uh, in the technology development, you transfer it to the business, uh, to the uh, work with uh, business uh, processes by creating uh, uh, different scenarios. We may start with uh, scenario A uh, around the happy path and move that then uh, to the next uh, uh, scenario in a second uh, step. Uh, if we can show that it still adds uh, enough uh, value. So to, to have a step-by-step -step approach uh, and to avoid uh, here boiling uh, the ocean, very, very uh, uh, important and uh, very, very uh, useful. And as mentioned before, we have then with our uh, to be uh, processes, a good summary of our requirements for the, the software configuration. And uh, we have uh, with the comparison of the, the as is and uh, the to be an excellent input for our uh, change management. Because if you have uh, those as is and to be uh, processes in a repository like uh, uh, Signavio, you can uh, do model comparisons and then you get uh, lists that show, oh, these are new activities uh, that we have to train uh, people on. These are uh, uh, activities that are not necessary anymore. These are uh, activities that uh, change. So you get a very good idea what to inform people about, uh, where to have uh, discussions on, and what kind of uh, training initiatives uh, are necessary. And since uh, the software configuration and the change management are both uh, based on the same version of the truth, we make sure that uh, people and technology get aligned around our future process, which delivers on the value drivers that we ha have identified in our focus and targeting value initiatives. So that we are now in a situation that we realize and put in place our new to be process that moves our strategy to execution through a digital transformation. But the journey is not uh, over now. Now we need uh, to keep those uh, processes on track. And to do that, uh, uh, it's uh, of course uh, uh, very key to have people in place that uh, really look after this end-to-end -end process across different uh, departments. So to have uh, process governance roles uh, in place that uh, take care of that, very, very uh, key. However, in a digital environment, those people can only act uh, with uh, the, the speed and uh, effectivity necessary if they have also for their governance, the appropriate uh, digital tools uh, available, if they have their process mining tools uh, to get uh, uh, information about their processes, if they have their process repository to understand uh, the, the target situation where we move uh, towards so that they can identify uh, where are uh, deviations. So we need uh, to also go with our uh, process governance uh, through a, a digital transformation 
organization itself and uh, enable uh, our process owners and our process uh, stewards to uh, really perform in that uh, digital world. And that uh, uh, makes it necessary to define the way we govern our processes more carefully than in the past. Uh, uh, I remember 15, 20 years ago, there were lots of such governance uh, uh, projects where most of the work was about identifying the roles and uh, defining uh, the, the, the role descriptions. In a digital environment, it's uh, important uh, to uh, define those governance processes so that uh, people understand how they use uh, the, the repository, how they use uh, the uh, mining tool. And uh, there, uh, that's not uh, a rocket science. There are five, six, uh, seven uh, uh, governance uh, scenarios like the ongoing performance management, uh, the launch of new initiatives, uh, 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 the, how they pull in uh, here the, the, the help of the, the BPM Center of Excellence, how they collaborate with other governance areas like data governance or uh, here compliance uh, uh, governance. So it's pretty straightforward, but it's important to define those governance processes carefully and reflect in them how they also move to the next uh, level, leveraging uh, uh, digital tools and uh, uh, technologies. And that leads to a situation that as an organization, uh, during your uh, digital transformation, you leave uh, also a, a tool environment uh, uh, behind and you put an environment and an architecture in place that helps you in the ongoing work and in the ongoing performance management of uh, your uh, processes. And uh, uh, we see here a very uh, a simple architecture uh, for such uh, an environment where we uh, use a process a repository to define the structural uh, information. How do we wanna uh, work uh, in the future where we do the design of our processes and we use that uh, design to drive the configuration of our automation and execution environments as discussed. But then very important, we use now that digital information that we have about our process and uh, uh, after a digital transformation, by definition, you have a higher degree of automation. That means now you have in your system logs all kind of so-called dark data that uh, uh, currently may not uh, be used. And you can use that to get information about, on one hand, the performance of your process. So do we really meet uh, the KPIs we have uh, defined? Where are we behind uh, so that we can uh, launch actions? But importantly, we also get conformance information. Do we really follow our process design? When we do additional steps, are they really necessary or do people just do them uh, because uh, they always used to do that and we can eliminate them? Or did we forget something in our design and we have to update it? That's why the integration between uh, here our process uh, repository with our uh, structural information and our process uh, mining with the information about process instances, what happens currently in our organization. It's very important. And that's why uh, I uh, really like the fact that, uh, for example, Signavio uh, has both uh, the modeling repository and the mining tool and has that nicely integrated so that you can really get uh, uh, both performance and conformance uh, information. And uh, uh, to make sure that we work on the right things, of course, uh, you have a prioritization uh, tool on top uh, of that. Uh, and uh, it's necessary to have that because with every change of your strategy of the business environment, there may be adjustments of your priorities and you wanna have that uh, on your fingertips. So with that, uh, you have then an, an environment to make your next generation governance happen. And uh, if you want uh, to make your entire BPM discipline work on an ongoing uh, basis. And with that, we are at uh, the end uh, of uh, that uh, short uh, discussion. We have seen that processes deliver the value 
from digitalization. So we need to make sure we have them under control. And having them under control means we have to identify where our high impact, low maturity processes are so that we focus on what matters most for our organization. We transform in an end-to-end -end, uh, context, understand uh, where we go and what uh, the business implications of the transformations uh, uh, are. So we use uh, techniques like process mining, like process uh, simulation in a pragmatic way to uh, uh, prepare for our uh, transformation, execute it. And uh, uh, once we have the new processes in place, we keep them on track through an appropriate digital process governance. And all that is embedded in our BPM discipline that we built during our transformation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Matthias and, and Nicole. Um, Nicole, you provided a great overview of, of what Signavio brings to the table for, for transformation projects. That was great. And Matthias, you, you always make things real for our audience with some great real world examples and working us through the, the best steps to take when embarking on, on a transformation project. So thank you so much. We do have a couple of questions and, and a little bit of time for, for just a couple. Uh, I wanted to ask one that makes so much sense. We've seen this before, and I think this will be great for you, Matthias. So um, research such as McKinsey, Forbes, Gartner has shown greater than 70% of digital transformations do not achieve the results desired. Uh, can you share your view on this environment and how to ensure that the results are better than that? Yeah, that's uh, a, a great uh, a question. And uh, uh, I, I can really uh, uh, agree with that. Uh, it, it, I see that every day when I work uh, with organizations and uh, I believe there's two key reasons for that. On one hand, uh, organizations tend uh, not uh, to uh, spend enough time identifying uh, where they get most of uh, the value out of such a transformation and how to get uh, 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 how to get it. So they don't focus uh, enough um, and tend a bit uh, to try to boil the ocean. And uh, that means they come up with unrealistic business cases uh, up front, uh, which is a, a huge uh, issue. And uh, uh, second, uh, they uh, overwhelm the organization that they uh, really cannot uh, deliver on that. So that's uh, one uh, uh, part of the issue. There's not enough preparation and not enough uh, uh, thought about uh, what we want to achieve and where we want to achieve it and what the journey looks like. Second, uh, there is a big uh, trend uh, towards focusing too quickly and too much on the technologies themselves. Oh, it's great that we have now this uh, 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 optical system in place uh, that uh, recognizes all kinds of parts. But well, what we do then with it, how, how it adds value to our QA process, to our manufacturing process, oh, uh, that is uh, a second thought. And if you just concentrate on uh, uh, technologies and not on the business impact they have, uh, you also run uh, into, uh, uh, into a, a trouble because then uh, you lose uh, the, uh, the, the business and outcome focus during the, the improvement and uh, transformation initiative. So uh, uh, to make sure on one hand to prepare, have a clear idea about the value we wanna achieve line that up in a, a, a roadmap that is digestible for the organization and uh, uh, then uh, uh, focus on the outcomes and not on the tools and technologies. That's uh, what you can do to uh, uh, not be part of those uh, 70%. And that's uh, uh, if you don't address any of those points, I'm pretty sure you will be uh, ending up in this 70% number. I agree, Mateus. I think it all starts with proper process documentation, right? That's just the heart and soul of getting a good look at what you have today and being able to um, optimize and augment the future state properly. So yes, hopefully um, with your methodology and you know, scoping this out properly with proper process documentation that can be avoided. And I agree with that. And I would even go a step further before you document 
uh, to have an idea about the impact of your processes through such an uh, impact assessment that helps you to uh, uh, also target that documentation work so that you really document in that end-to-end -end process uh, that uh, provides most value or where the subcomponents are, uh, where you have the biggest uh, challenges. So to, 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 to get a, a, such an impact uh, uh, assessment upfront helps you to uh, uh, really focus on all the activities afterwards on what matters. Excellent. Thank you so much. I think, you know, not and not boiling the ocean. I think that was a good one too that you, that you said. It makes so much sense. Um, <clears throat> okay. This is another um, media one. And you touched on this, Matthias. Um, I recently had an experience with claims processing department of a major travel insurance company. This experience took two and a half years to get to completion. How would process mining reflect or quantify such a wasted effort? I am not sure if I understand the question uh, correctly. I, I think so. Would process mining have helped this process um, been a little clearer or faster? I think is the to sum it up. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not clear about the two years. Did the improvement initiative take two years or did it take two years uh, to resolve the claim? Oh, got it. Said to, to get to completion. Okay, so to resolve the claim. I'm, I'm gathering. Yeah, and uh, that's of course a very interesting uh, case. You see, if you uh, uh, do such a, a process mining uh, initiative, then uh, uh, some very typical data that you can get out of uh, uh, that is uh, uh, cycle times. We just uh, did something, uh, uh, some uh, analysis like that in a, uh, here in an. Uh, a technology company for their procurement uh, process. And we could show them that uh, uh, over time, their procurement, uh, the, the time from the, the, the from getting the procurement request till sending out uh, the order increased and increased uh, and uh, uh, increased. So it really uh, became a problem for the organization. But then by diving deeper into this uh, data using the analytics of uh, uh, here, the Signavio process mining, we could show that those uh, average uh, cycle times got longer because of uh, uh, very specific exceptions. So we could address those uh, cases and uh, uh, make sure that we uh, really get uh, the, the right improvements and with that uh, also uh, reduce the average time needed. And in this claims uh, situation from this uh, travel agency, I could imagine uh, a similar situation that uh, there may be an interesting and, and, and uh, good process in place uh, for handling standard claims, but always when there are exceptions, complicated ones, uh, things don't get done, uh, done properly. And with a process mining approach, you see those uh, exceptions so you, that you can act uh, and uh, accelerate uh, those and make sure that uh, they don't get stuck uh, uh, in the future. So uh, it sounds like a very, very good uh, uh, opportunity to, uh, to address uh, that situation with process mining. Perfect, that makes sense, thank you. And I think we have uh, time for one more. And this is, a, um, I think, an age-old question. It'll be interesting to, to hear what you have to say about this, both of you. How do you convince an organization to document processes from a business standpoint? So not just a systems point of view, but from a business standpoint. Hmm. Uh... I would take a step back uh, and not convince them at all uh, that they need to document uh, their processes. I would uh, convince stakeholders and management that uh, they need to know where the improvement opportunities are, that they need to be uh, very focused in the activity so that they don't spend any unnecessary money. So I would talk about the outcomes, the effects uh, we achieve. And when uh, people then buy into the outcomes, uh, the, the documentation of processes from a business point of view, that is just uh, the mechanics uh, behind it to deliver those outcomes. 
Uh, and uh, as soon as we start uh, trying to have people buy into the, the, the mechanics and uh, the tools, it gets uh, difficult because many people just uh, uh, even nowadays don't understand it. So uh, always think about uh, the outcomes, the value we uh, produce, get the buy in into that, and then uh, we can leave the, the execution and the mechanics uh, to the, the experts and practitioners. Yeah, from my, from my point of view, I think it's always joining the business and IT teams together to make a productive path forward. And I think, you know, getting the wisdom of the crowd of everyone involved within the company in this process, there might be ways of which things should be done, could be done. We would like things to be done differently than how they are thought of today or we would like to execute um, you know, from, from historically, uh, from a historic standpoint. So I think it's also not a convincing reason um, to just say um, business or IT or systems point of view have to be documented. It's just from, from the nature of everybody involved for the business to move forward. I think it's just allowing everyone to participate, have a say and get involved in the process for change management purposes as well that um, everyone can be involved in the progress of the company moving forward. And I think, you know, documentation and, and processes and, and logs of systems can, can sound arduous and, and technical, but it's also, you know, important for business stakeholders to be involved and work together with everyone. So I think um, from that point of view, our, you know, Signavio allows that, that, you know, that viewpoint to be, to be given. So, yeah, that's uh, a very good uh, uh, point. Uh, uh, I just uh, want to stress again, I would, uh, if we need to convince stakeholders, uh, I would never start with explaining the, 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 the modeling and the tools and the techniques. I would always recommend to start explaining the value we deliver, the outcomes, and then discuss with the practitioners uh, the mechanics behind it. And there it's then uh, absolutely a key to have those uh, integrated teams, because if you look at the business process, at the end, it only works if uh, uh, it's clearly defined who is doing what, using which systems, which data to produce which deliverables and in which logical sequence. There's very uh, solid research that those five dimensions need to be clarified, otherwise you always miss something. And in order to clarify those uh, five uh, dimensions of uh, a business process, uh, we need uh, uh, integrated uh, uh, team between business and uh, 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 technology and uh, bring all those uh, uh, process views together. So very good point. <laughs> very sensible. Thank you to both of you. So um, to, to summarize then, uh, just to, to close out for today, this is a, a really informative uh, 45 minutes together. So thank you so much to both of you. Um, as I mentioned at the outset, you'll receive a recording, a recording of this session within a couple of days. And please take a moment to complete the survey upon your exit. We would appreciate your getting your input. So thanks to both of you and uh, have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.